basically, this, I, th I feel like this is one of the best type of showcases we can do. So it's somebody who is free to play and um, basically it's going to tell us how they manage their account, how they manage their time so that they do get a lot of these different rewards. So Rafflin re redeemed a, a showcase and I think this is probably one of the best ones we could do. How are you doing? Like, um, Mr. Free to Play, are you a competitor to BGE? Uh, I don't I don't think so. So I haven't beaten Doom Tower hard yet. Um, I'm about half, I'm level 45, so I'm not even ha halfway through that. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the rest of things. And um, <clears throat> I had a few coaching sessions off you and I th thought I'm going to do one more coaching session. A lot of people talk about the fusions and it would be, I thought, quite interesting because I've actually done the last three, four fusions successfully. I'm sure. feeling pretty comfortable going into this one. Okay, nice. Well, should we? Um, let me just finish this run, then we we'll get your account up. I guess whilst we're we're waiting to do that, talk us through like how long have you been playing the game for? Um, yeah, and and did you kind of set out to be a free to player, or is, is it just kind of evolved that way? So I definitely set out to be a free to player. Um, I actually ended up on raid through Twitch. I was following okay. another streamer who was a StarCraft streamer, and they were doing one of the raid promotions because obviously. Literally everyone who has a YouTube or Twitch account does a raid <laughs> promotion. Yeah, and I play a few other mobile games, and I was determined that this one I wasn't going to spend too much money on it. And sure. originally I wasn't going to spend too much time on it. Um, I failed on one of those two things. Uh, but I, <laughs> I definitely wanted to keep it free to play, and I've, I've I've enjoyed it. It does something that none of the other games do in terms of team building, um, which is the ability to gear the individual characters and the number of characters and the combinations is is way ahead of other games I play. So I play like Marvel Strike Force and the yeah. teams are quite fixed. There's no choice over the skills or the gearing. Um, and so that creativity is quite good fun. I think this fusion is going to be another one where I'll probably, I am going to go for the legendary dwarf because I need a dwarf for dwarf faction. Right. But I know I'm passing up and I actually prefer the fact that it's a classic fusion here because if I really go hard, I'll be able to get duplicates of some of the epics and I won't necessarily have to choose one or the other. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so you've been playing for a year. Great Hall's looking pretty well advanced. Um, like, Is this something you concentrated on right from the start? Um, I would love to say yes. I <laughs> kind of bashed my face against Arena um, before the first bot round of bots came in and then yeah. when they first dropped the bots i uh, accelerated through it quite quickly very basic team uh so it was hikerton into uh seeker into war maiden into athel who was my starting champion yeah. and basically through sheer bloody mindedness of being online and refreshing and picking the fight so i was able to get some gold medals that way Sure. Um, yeah, so pretty and, standard yeah. setup that once you've understood the, the kind of concept of arena, that's going to get you somewhere as long as you... Again, it's kind of a gear check at that point. It's like if, if you yeah. understand the, the right sort of team to build, then it comes down to do you gear them well enough or have you got good enough gear to, to kind of keep those medals coming in? Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty focused on that. I mean, you can see from the number of matches that I actually click through. I'm yeah. reasonably religious about using the 39 free medals you get, and I've got an okay win win rate at this point. Yeah, um, sure. And, I've, and that's are you at I've... the point now where you save medals until the next Clan v Clan comes in, or are you not yeah. surprised about that? Yeah, I, I, I will do it for my, um, my... My clan's not super advanced, so we don't kill Ultra Nightmare, so I only get one chest of Ultra Nightmare. Oh, okay. Um, but they're a really nice group, and we've kind of just been chipping away at this for a year for most of us so yeah. and and frankly the game just isn't it isn't rewarding enough or competitive enough to push people to jump clans i could jump clan to get the second ultra nightmare chest but you know i would rather not um yeah and then the the, the actual game itself isn't structured in a way that you know it's not really competitive unless you're pushing platinum or you you know you want to be in one of those top clans that is pushing the cvc yeah for sure okay so i mean i guess the first i've been getting questions in here is this person free to play and all that sort of stuff yep yeah. uh, so Raff, Raffin, all of my goals. are you totally free to play or are you kind of like i've completely so um completely <laughs> not like free. battle so... pass free to play or something like that oh no 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 um so <laughs> i'm actually 
I'm player in play. Um, so funny, I've I've never spent a penny on the game, but mm. I'm going. I've been working from home for the last. 14, 15 months, and sure. so I've actually had to buy a laptop so that I can take my laptop to work and sort of click on some of the farming at work. So I've, um, that wasn't free, but the the accounts free. But I, so, I can so you tell bought you a laptop, but nothing in the game, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but if you look at my legendaries, it's like I've got Drexthar, I got him out of the bazaar. I've got Razin from the fusion. Yeah. Uh, I got Brago from the fusion. Brogni from the fusion, Astralon's from a fusion, Sil you get as a pull, uh, sorry, you get as a login calendar, um, Altan was a pull, Sathalia was a pull, uh, Valkyrie was a pull, yeah, nice, um, and nice Hegemon there, was a pull. Um, and then there are, you know, actually my very first legendary was Warchief, which was a complete disaster. I was, <laughs> imagine being free to play and you get your first gold and yeah. you don't, like, yeah. oh my god, what is this? Yeah, for those that have just joined the stream, so we've got Raflin on uh, mic here, totally free to play. He's been playing for about a year. Uh, basically, the reason why he's come on to do this showcase is to show you, as a free to play, how does he prepare for different events in the game? How has he kind of worked his way through the game um, to get to the level he's at? And we're going to show some of that stuff in a minute. Uh, at the minute, we're just kind of talking through his roster, why he's kind of leveled some of the champs he has, and, and you know how he's managed to get some of these uh, fusions. So. Looking at, at champs then, so I spot a Kreela. Yeah. Is that the is that the earliest fusion that you'd done? No, I missed Kreela the first time round. I oh, got okay. her when they came back and did the extra shards. Oh did you? Yeah, okay. You've actually pulled all the counter attack champions, which Oh, I mean, it's it's gross. <laughs> I think at one point I had like four skull crushers. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And and you you never really need more than one, so I, I kind of ended up just trashing them but yeah i've got all the counter attackers which has been huge because yeah um having a good clan boss team really enables a lot of everything that comes off the back of that because that's where i get books and shards yeah for sure so so what are you running on your clan boss right now uh you can you can actually go in if you Come want on. so, so one key that's a nightmare one key nightmare easily so and as you uh, say your clan doesn't beat ultra nightmare so yeah i mean it's a, i don't know if you want to go through because it's about a 15 minute run but if you if you click the key but don't start the fight you can see the team um it's so it's it's altan's my um defense up and uh offense down a uh, decreased yeah. attack and then i've got razin for decreased defense and weaken and obviously he, he just slams like he, his basics do about 150k for me nice. um You've got Brogni and Valk. Valk does her job. Brogni is increasing the shield for the second AoE and putting block debuffs for the stun. And then Grizzle Jarl, um, he gives me another de increased defense. He gives me a second block debuffs if it's an affinity boss. Okay. Um, he's the exact same speed as Valk, so if I swap his position, he'll go before ba Valk and he can put up block debuffs. And then um, he also just smacks pretty hard. He also gives you a backup decrease attack if Altan doesn't do the job. Sure. Grizzled's A3 will do a two-turn decrease attack. So he, he'll sometimes come in and save the day. Um, and th this team, I was when I got Valk, I was super excited. In fact, one of my first coaching sessions, I asked you if I should use Valk because I didn't have any books to get her A3 um her a2 down and you're yeah. like no so i had to save up all my books <laughs> get her all you know save so many books to get her and and it was the very last book that gave me the cool down on her a2 he she's obviously huge um so before brogni i had frozen banshee and i was coming up just short so i was normally doing about a 32 to 33 million key so yeah. I was never quite getting there. So Brogni, because they have such big shields up for all of the fight, no one actually gets hurt until about turn 32 or 33. No one ever actually takes any damage, even though they're all in lifesteal. Right. And so I put him in toxic gear. And what's interesting is because of the way his mechanic works, every time somebody gets hit with a shield, he effectively hits them. And that can proc Giant Slayer, but it can also proc Poison. And oh, nice. So oh, okay, I didn't know you that. Can, actually. You can you can basically fill the bar with multiple poison debuffs, and yeah. he actually ends up being 
um, the the biggest damage dealer. The biggest damage dealer. So how are you keeping him alive then? Literally just through the shielding? Yeah, so the shield, yeah. he never takes any damage until about round 33, 34. Uh, and then AoE 1, as long as he's still got a shield after he's hit, he gets healed. Wow, that's cool. And and why then do you not put the other ones in other gear other than life still? I uh, so a big so they part still of being extend the fight beyond the thirty threes. A big part of being free to play is cutting corners, um, and so regearing them all isn't going to get me to a one key ultra nightmare, but it's going to cost me a ton of silver and time, um, and so there's not much benefit. And then there is some content in Doom Tower. Um, and some of the dungeons where having Razin and Altan in lifesteal is is pretty useful. That's cool, man. That's uh, that's really good, actually. So let's have a look then. Um, we've got a fusion coming up next week. Yes. How well prepared are you for that? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. So if you go to the portal, um, and we can kind of talk through maybe starting there. Uh, so number one, I've saved oh, my shards. Two shards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have the time. <laughs> I, Time, time is a time is a killer. Uh, like, uh, yeah, being free to play is about using the resources you're given, as many as you can, and and cutting corners. And the biggest resource you end up paying away is time. Uh, so I, I don't have time to pull five thousand mystery shards. Um, <laughs> most most summon rushes, the the big reward in terms of either the epic or the fragments has come at about three three and a half thousand points the last few yeah um, obviously that's no guarantee it'll come again but that means that if i hold on to six or seven sacreds i'm probably good for the summon rush probably there yeah. and so that's the first thing i've got lined up and i didn't pull on the 10x if a 2x came through i'd probably pull three or four shards but i'll keep that kind of minimum to make sure that i've got that and then if you go to the fragment summon yeah can i just tab, ask so yeah. I, when we've got a two times, are you pulling these generally at all, like your voids or your ancients, or are you just saving for fusions and stuff like that? So the basic math is if you pull six sacreds in a two times, you've got about a 50-50 chance of getting a, a, a Lego. Obviously, you could get more, but you've got about 50-50, and you don't know which Lego you're going to get. Yeah. If you pull those six shards during a fusion you've got about a 20% chance of pulling a Lego and you definitely do the fusion and you know what the fusion champion is. Yeah. So unless you don't like the fusion champion or like me, you've got some excess shards, I think you're always meant to pull during the, the fusion because, you know, it's just, it's just much better return even though you can't necessarily um, uh, kick it. I can see someone in chat saying that's not how math works. Um, so you've got an 88% chance of pulling during a 2x, and then, so you've got an 88% chance of not pulling a Lego during a 2x, so 12% chance of pulling, 88% chance of not pulling, 88% raised to the fifth power, which is five shards, comes out at about 50%. Um, so that's how it gets to about half. Uh, if you go to the fragment summon, this is the other part. Um, I kind of started prepping for this fusion at the last fusion, which means okay. I haven't pulled Rural, and you can see I haven't pulled Yoshi, uh, and I've even got Burgoth. Um, and so, 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 so you, this would have been from a long time ago, was that? Yeah, but you know, it, it's a combination of what's the most thing that Yoshi can, useful thing that Yoshi can do for me. So if if I pulled Yoshi, could I finish? Shadowkin faction wars. No, right. So maybe I could get a few more rounds, but that doesn't seem to be in the rotation yet. Uh, yeah. If I pulled Yoshi, would I get better arena returns? Yeah, it, would he actually help any of my teams? I probably wouldn't build him. So actually, the only value he has in my account right now is as champion chase. Yep, makes sense. Um, so you're just holding. So so you were fine for like let's say the last fusion that popped up. So you know you were just like you know what I'm just gonna hold. Hold him yeah. until I need it, basically. So, so the way they've been doing it, they they seem to be doing the two X's during the champion chase. So, during the champion chase and the two X, I might pull, um, I might pull thirty, forty ancients. I might pull five voids because it, it's still a two X and it gives me better value. And then, 
I'll see what's left and I can make up, you know, if there's 50 points left, I'll pull some green shards. If there's 500 points left, I've got this as a resource to do. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome prep. And then someone was just saying there, I've seen, uh, they've seen your gem count. They've seen your silver count. So um, talk us through it. How have you got 7,000 gems? Uh, 7,000 gems. Because there's literally not enough hours in the day to spend them. Like it's, um, so that's how I prep for champion chase and summon rush. And then the other big one is champion training. Uh, yeah. So if you go into my mailbox, you'll see... Um, I've started saving now some of these energy isn't going to keep so the stuff that one day is left I'm just going to have to use it but if you scroll down um, now that we get these daily packs every I think it's every third day we get an energy drop yeah. so I'll, I'll hold on to that now if you try and do an energy refill when you have an energy refill in your inbox it won't let you do it with gems so if I'm trying to stack up energy for a fusion <laughs> The only time I can spend it is between the fusions, um, and I haven't. If you press I just the plus here, you can, it fast you can do it with gems, can't you? Hmm? If you press the plus oh, here, maybe I've never tried. Yeah, I, I think that's that's how I do it actually. So if I'm I mean, farming if overnight, I know oh, it does do that. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Um, ah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. And and then so this is one way of storing up energies. You can see I've got the banners from my CVC stored up, um, so that helps. Yeah. And then if you check out my missions and quests. Oh, someone's saying I can buy it from the shop. That's really cool. I had no idea. I just I just been chilling between fusions. Um <laughs> obviously the weekly one's gonna roll over, so I can't do anything there. But if you go to the monthly one, um the monthly one you can see that I've got my my four hundred energy there. And yeah. then in the advanced quests I've got my three day double XP. So I've already got five days worth of double xp banners nice. and a couple of thousand energy stacked up and yeah it's amazing how quickly you... that adds because actually when i first started playing the game it's there was not this kind of amount of energy drops you know like the packs and you know, the different advanced quests and stuff like that it, it soon adds up now on a daily basis how much extra energy you get um yeah it really stacks up which comes back to the time thing, right? So each day you get 39 arena battles. You get 24 hours plus a 10 refill plus a 5 refill. So you yeah. get 39 arena battles. You then get two sets of 3v3, which is another sure. 60 arena battles. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've got your four keys. You've got 15 silver keys in Doom Tower. Um, and my, you know, again, being free to play... I don't have the fastest dungeon teams. When I'm working from home, I can put a 10, uh, 10 runs or 15 runs, and it's okay that the runs take six or seven minutes each because I'm maximizing my gear for the amount of energy I have. Yeah. Obviously, in a competition, so if there's a tournament running, that that's kind of brutal, and I'll probably go down to stage 20, which is a bit more efficient for, um, for, for so points the, anyway. Burning your energy. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'll you know, by the time I've done three hours worth of dragon runs, which is my thirty dragon runs, and everything else, you know, I get <laughs> I basically get to the end of the day, and I'm either spending an hour doing a gear cleanse, an hour you know regearing yeah. one champion, or an hour gearing masteries, and then I've kind of given up. I've had enough for the day. Yeah. Um, so, so how long? I know you're not kind of actively on the game for the whole time, but how long is your whatever you're using, your laptop or whatever, running raid through the day? So uh, I, I work in finance. So I get up and my day starts at 7 a.m. And I would say I probably around the time you come on to stream at 7 or 8, I've got to the point where I'm kind of doing the nice to do content versus the the grind. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, if I was really focused, it would probably be six to seven hours. If you're kind of clicking things in a spare screen, you know, you are looking at quite a long period of time because it's, for example, doing the 3v3s, waiting the 15 minutes for those refreshes and, yeah, you know, then doing... Uh, so this is another place where you can store energy. Um, I'm going to collect that energy tomorrow. Mm. Seven days from now, I'll have another 300 energy for 
the uh, for the go, and then I'll always pick up the blue shards and the rare skill tomes. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. So, do you basically get these whenever they're on off tool down? I should probably stop buying the rare books because I've got almost a hundred of them. But the ancient shards, yeah, yeah. Um, and do you ever go up into silver and and sort of dabble in more, or have we not got that far? Um, so my three v three is pretty bad. <laughs> um, I've <laughs> uh the problem i haven't really invested in having three speed leads yeah so i've got heikerton who used to be my old speed lead i've got arbiter who's my speed lead now and i don't have the third one and so it's it's pretty hard to consistently win my way up into silver um i think i'm a couple of missions away from needing to do that on the new mission set so i'm, I'm going to do that but again it's like free to play investing in a speed lead for 3v3 is so freaking yeah. niche <laughs> It's such a such a bad use of time and resources um, versus pretty much anything else. Um, sure. But I will eventually have to do it. But like you say, you're still... This is the point I tried to make when I was doing my free-to-play account is some of these bottom-tier rewards are actually still pretty good to pick up on a regular basis. And obviously, you did your Drexar as well from here, which um, yeah. I'd say anyone free-to-play or anyone really playing the game should be picking those up on a daily basis because... Drexar is a really good uh, late game champ. Yeah, it's pretty painful trying to do it for 100 days and you're going to yeah, miss days. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a 24 hour cooldown, you're going to miss days you, as it you kind push of yourself back all the time, don't yeah, you? Yeah. 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 Um, can, can I just check as well book situation? You did mention rare books there. Yes. So, how do you prioritize who you're going to book? I see there's no books here in your ARB. Um, um, so, basically, Clan Boss, anybody in the Clan Boss gets books. Yeah. Uh, anyone in a dungeon where I need the book, particularly for debuffs, gets books. Um, and then Astralon was probably the first PvP to get books, Astralon and Sathalia. So for Sathalia, okay. I wanted the 100% chance to remove their buffs. And yeah. then for Astralon, um, I was basically losing quite a few matches where the 75% chance to sun would, would kind of let me down. Um, sure. And then obviously true to form, it it took every I had twelve books and it took all twelve of them to get the cool to get the hundred percent and the <laughs> cooldown on the stun, which was painful. Um yeah. so what you'll find with the characters at the top is most of them are booked because a lot of them were in a a uh, clan boss team at some point. Or for example, if it's Haikatun, you know, I, I want I want the percentage chance. Um and yeah. then more recently damage dealers because obviously you you did the work around damage dealers so um cold so actually though i mean yeah we're not talking a crazy number of champions here we're talking what six seven eight a uh, nine out of nine legendaries that you're using kind of on a day-to-day -day basis probably about half of fully booked um yeah most of your epics that you actually use are fully booked yeah um and then i'd imagine probably all of the rares you actually use are, are there or thereabouts are they yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. very, I'm very protective about my books on the on the legendaries because they're so rare. And then it's like, okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> do you never use Bruce? Do you never use him? Um, no, <laughs> he's the short version. Well, that's yeah. part of being prepared for champion training. Um, that's also how I've got a high level. Um, you know. It, <laughs> grinding champions is is probably the best use for energy unless you're grinding for gear so if yeah. you're if you're grinding brutal 12 3 you're getting you're getting hero drops you're getting and um xp and you're getting um gear gold silver sure. so i'll grind through them if you use brew you're actually using silver so every yeah. time you use brew you have to spend silver so like if you're brewing aggressively that's probably why you're suffer that's probably one of the reasons why you're finding silver a drain. Um yeah. but also it's that kind of balance between patience and um and resources, isn't it? Yeah. I mean it, I I mean to be fair, this is excessive. It's not deliberate. <laughs> um it's a habit. But when it gets to cha champion chase, uh, so one of the things you can do that sorry, we haven't mentioned for champion chase is um basically have stuff ready to go. So I've got I've pro I think I've got like a whole bunch of food that are prepared so that when the champion chase drops, I can take a five star hero. Um, sorry, they're not in there. They're actually in the, the main. They're not in the vault. Oh, they're, they're not your pre prepared ones, no? Uh, no, the prep ones are just in the. Yeah, if you just expand that, you'll 
it'll be really obvious. Yeah, you'll see a whole row of them. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see the five stars. Yeah, yeah. So you've got but, you've got but, another six, two six stars ready to go. Yeah. So when the champion training drops, I can five star somebody, and then brew them all the way to sixty, and mm. then ascend them, and that's like a thousand points. Yeah. Off the bat, and so again. It's not that I don't spend the resources, but if I spend them during a champion training event rather than just spending them now on this stream, then you get a lot more. Sure. And how are you doing for other stuff? So, um, <laughs> are you are you a content creator as well? You get free chickens or no? No, no. <laughs> so but you get 12... a lot. Like, like but the, <laughs> yeah. this is the thing. Is like you, you, if you do all of the dailies, if you. You know, if if when there's a tournament running, my thirty autos are in dragon for it when it's a dragon, and it's in um, ice golem when it's in an ice golem. If during a fusion, normally one above the champion, there's a four or five star chicken, or there's uh, a yep. book. And so if you if you do the extra work to not get five hundred points a day and get the bare minimum for the rare, but to do seven hundred points a day and get the book at the top, you can get stuff. Um, and For then sure. it's there. I mean, this is this is. I know. I know. I can see people saying it's excessive. But if you, if you, if I walked into a fusion, right, you need forty-eight three-star chickens, sixteen four-star chickens, and a five-star chicken to complete the fusion and six-star the hero you get. So that's all of that. Those chickens are basically like infusion. And yeah, they, they like, just I, help you do that fusion much quicker, or. or... Give you a guarantee that you're going to get the fusion done yeah um, and, and i can see some people saying like it's too much patience like i'm by no means saying this is for everyone yeah. um but part of it is part of it is it, you build good habits early in the game and then you probably go past the point where you need them but because they're habits you just keep doing them right like so at this yeah. point it doesn't um i don't get upset because i see that i've got lots of chickens i'm more like again do I want to spend two hours six starring and and gearing a champion? And you're like, eh, I'll wait for an artifact enhancement event. So when yeah, the sure. artifact enhancement event's running, and if there's champion training running, I can um, I can maybe take that five star Creela, make her six star, fully do her, and actually sit down and build her. And that yeah, to so, me so is you, fun. So you always try and make sure that you couple whatever you're doing with an event or a tournament or something yeah. that's going on in the game basically um yeah and uh, what about potions obviously we've got a fusion coming up next week is this something now you're gonna divert some energy to or do you feel like you're probably already there probably um, there, are you? not far off so so i actually had almost no white potions or green potions um when they announced the fusion yeah that's that's 30 runs on a level 20 but it doesn't take that long anymore that's that's sure. 30 runs on a level 20 keep that's crazy actually yeah it, it yeah, I mean, really this is this is, is the part of the game they've massively enhanced, isn't it? This is this is the part they really got right when they did the yeah, um, yeah, additional it's, stuff. It's actually faster and better. It's like genuinely better yeah. in every single direction. Okay, cool. Um, so a few people asking about faction wars, and I guess this is probably an area that you're still working through. Yes. Um, so you're a year into the game. How do you kind of prioritize when you're going to look? Um, kind of really advance in a faction um a lot of it comes down to what i've been doing elsewhere so for example the one faction i've finished is barbarians and that's because i've got a sill i've got an altan i've got a valk yeah and i'm using them everywhere else so it, it, sure. it kind of makes itself um i am at the point where i'm probably gonna have to build heroes just for faction wars and yeah. for me, that's a little bit painful, but it's you know this and this and Doom Tower are the the big ones. So um, I I kind of need to work out what I'm doing around Doom Tower. I'm stuck on the wave where it's just all like 17 madams and I can't get past it, and it's just I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, so that that uh, 45F. It's like Madame, 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 Madame. I just, oh, I just <laughs> why is that so? I don't know why that's so bad. It's just because she's planting all your counter attacks and stuff off. I, I just don't seem to be able to keep them controlled for long enough, and then eventually mm. they just blow me up. Um, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but um, don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, I'm, okay. we're, I'll basically look at it and I've actually had to start thinking about who I want to build for certain faction wars because um, like, sh if I had more legendaries, it would be like obvious you're meant to build these ones. But when you're trying to piece together a team out of mostly epics and rares, it, it does mean just like thinking a little bit more. Um, yeah. And actually, probably if if we did one of these or we did a takeover, um, a coaching thing in three or four months' time, probably what would have changed from now until then would be the faction wars. Because, you know, I'm not trying to push platinum. I'm not too bothered about trying to get one key ultra nightmare because I'd probably have to build an unkillable and I don't want to. Yeah. And so, you know, what what's left to push? It's faction wars and Doom Tower. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it becomes the end game, doesn't it? And are you are you still as kind of motivated and and into the game to the point where you think you're going to do that, to, or or is it kind of like do you feel like you're almost at your level of completion? I, I no, I would like to get through faction wars. Um, would, yeah, okay. I'm pretty resigned to the fact I'm not gonna get not going to get there before Shadow King comes out, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but it is what it is, and. I would like to get through Doom Tower. I think for a player like me, where Platinum's not really realistic, um, I'm just not willing to put the work in. And coming back to the thing, like the game doesn't really have any progress. I mean, you mentioned it. Like there's no real. I mean, there is better gear, but it's not like you go through Doom Tower and you come out and you've got new Doom Tower gear and you're ready for Doom Tower Two, right? Sure. The, yeah. The game's goals. are basically what you set yourself yeah which some people love and some people don't um i for me the pace of content is high enough that i would have to get through all of faction wars and all of doom tower and if i'd have done all that and there was nothing else to do maybe at that point it would trail off because i i don't think clan v clan is particularly compelling it, yeah. it's it's basically a, a farm and a whale off and it you know there's not there's much not much to it um, but obviously different people have different goals like Deadwood Jedi and, and Ian K, like they'll probably the day they quit is probably the day they get bored of building new clan boss teams, right? So yeah. um, you know, for me this is something that gives me a reason to keep looking in and building characters. And yeah, some and of the guys were saying for stuff like masteries, do you um do you always run them like through Minnow? I do. I yeah. probably at some point should just bite the bullet and buy them. Um, but if you go into Minnow now, you can actually see I've got um, two of them running, f basically set up. Uh, and again, you know, like, I'll call it relatively basic stuff, but you can see that Marta's not got her, sorry, not Marta, um, Godseeker, she's not leveled to 60. So I'll normally brew them up to like 53. And then, yeah. so you'll see um, even Hegemon's not 60, he's 58 and he's in yeah, my arena team. And I'll just, I'll just let him get the last few levels by running content. Cool. Look, thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking us through your account. It's been really interesting. I've, I've found it really cool. Um, it's always good to see a different way of playing the game, a different perspective. Um, so, yeah, appreciate you doing that, buddy. Thank you so much. Cool. Right. We will uh, catch up with you later. Thanks, man. Bye. See you later.